And talking about combat camera, you know, which is very interesting, um, are those films seen by the public or is that all top secret footage? Um, talk a little bit about that, what the footage and what the what, what you're trying to create um, within combat camera. Much like our lives in the freelance film and TV world, it, it kind of depends on the job or the operation or what's going on. I would say 90 some percent of what our combat camera teams photograph or film uh, for the military ends up being uh, released publicly and available to the public. Um, there is an online repository of all of that stuff now. Um, when I had originally started <laughs> back in 1994, we, we weren't fully digital yet, particularly in video. So we were still shooting videotape. Um, digital 35 millimeter cameras were just coming on board, but still shooting a lot of film as well. So that repository used to be, uh, you know, a physical building, um, actually in Southern California, where all that stuff eventually made it, and some of it went to the National Archives. But uh, yeah, a good majority of it's available now online at a site called DIVIDS, Defense Visual Information Distribution Service. Uh, it's called, let's see, I'll give you the website if you're interested, and it's DividsHub.net. <laughs> DavidTub.net, okay. and anybody can sign up and create an account, and you can, you know, see all, all of this very cool um, military footage and photography. Um, and it's, there are some very talented folks uh, serving in uniform who who are visual communicators, audiovisual communicators, do some great work. So, um, so the main purpose is is marketing. Airport, not necessarily. Um, I would say the, the every mission that a combat camera team would do would serve uh, the purpose of documenting uh, the operation. So being documentary historians, if you will, um, mm -hmm. you know, sending someone out there to to be able to have a visual record of what our military has done. Um, and there are a multitude of reasons uh, that that can serve um, or, or, or multitude of requesters who might ask for a team to go somewhere. And that stems from you know, the operations teams who need to either look at airfields where planes will be flying in from an Air Force perspective. But this is also across the joint community, which is Army, Navy, Air Force, now Space Force, um, Marine Corps. Um, but uh, you know, anytime you want eyes on the battlefield or, or what's going on, um, that, that, that would probably be our team. Although now you have the proliferation of other cameras and, you know, you've got satellites as well, but uh, sometimes there's nothing better for eyes on the ground than a human with a camera. And that's where those combat camera teams come in. We also train them much like we do in the civilian uh, uh, TV and film business to be good storytellers, to edit stories out of that. Um, there are news functions within the service. Uh, there's AF News, uh, there's Defense Media Activity. These are organizations that create news reports uh, for internal use, uh, so keeping you know, the largest company in the United States, the Department of Defense, the largest employer of any number of people. And I, I, I wish I could quote you the number, but it, it, it's a big organization. And so disseminating internal information to that group uh, happens through any number of ways from websites to social media, but also through television news reports, radio news reports, AFRTS, Air Force Radio and Television Service. So there are these are niche and smaller career fields um, within the military mm -hmm. branches, but but they're there, and they're um, a lot of a lot of folks have gotten their start there. Um, you know, Ronald Reagan was in a combat camera unit back in World War II. Jimmy Stewart, as well. 